Brian Koberger just asked the courts for a change of venue through his attorney, Ann Taylor. Let's talk about that. Hey everyone, it's Lucky with Unfiltered Lucky. And today I want to talk a little bit about this motion that Brian Koberger filed through his attorney, Ann Taylor, for a change of venue. Now, Brian Koberger does not believe that a local jury is going to be able to be fair and impartial. Now, we kind of saw this coming and we knew that this motion was coming. We knew that the defense was going to file for a change of venue. There's very good reasons why the defense would want a change of venue. It would be very beneficial to Brian Koberger. One of the big reasons is that this is a very small, tight-knit community. There's a lot of influence in this community, in this small town. We've seen that throughout this case from the very, very beginning. You know, this town has not talked about these Idaho four crimes. They haven't come out and talked at all. They've stayed pretty quiet. I really thought that more people in this community would be talking by now. But they're not. You know, they're staying quiet, which, you know, leads us to believe that there's a lot of influence in this small town. So the question is, are there people out there who are not familiar with this case? And the answer is, of course, yes, there are a lot of people out there who are not familiar with the Idaho 4 case. We have to keep in mind that you and I are interested in true crime. You know, true crime is something that we're interested in and something that we pay attention to, you know, something that we want to look into because we're curious and we want answers. But there's a lot of people out there that could care less about true crime. You know, there's a lot of people out there who may have heard this story, maybe on the news or maybe chatting with friends, and they really could care less about this case. There's a lot of people out there that probably don't know anything about the Idaho 4 case. You know, for us, of course, we feel like everybody on this earth has probably heard about this case because we're so into this case. But a lot of times when I'm talking to people and I bring up the Idaho 4 case, a lot of times people don't know what I'm talking about. Or if they do... They usually say something like, oh, is that the story about those sorority girls that, you know, lost their lives in Iowa or Indiana? So even though we like to think that everybody's heard about this case, you know, there's a lot of people who wouldn't, you know, wouldn't even look twice at this case because it's not in their interest. You know, the Super Bowl is worldwide. You know, it's a worldwide event. People all over the world are watching the Super Bowl. And everybody knows about the Super Bowl. But I couldn't tell you which teams were in the Super Bowl because I don't watch football. That's not really my interest. So although it's well known and, you know, people all over the world know about the Super Bowl, I couldn't really give you any details about the Super Bowl. Now, even if they can find individuals locally who are not familiar with this case, there's still a lot of influence in this small town. So if jurors come from this small town, is Brian Koberger going to be able to get a fair trial? Are these jurors going to be able to make choices based strictly on the evidence when it comes to this case. Ann Taylor said in court last Friday that the defense is having problems 
getting cooperation from any of the witnesses. You know, she's saying that people don't even want to talk to the defense. And that's probably a good indicator to Brian Koberger that there's influence going on in this small town. And maybe that's why he believes that he's not going to be able to get a fair trial with a local jury. There's also the influence that the University of Idaho has on this community. The University of Idaho has already demonstrated that, you know, they're not afraid to show their might. Ann Taylor said on Friday that there's over 400 witnesses. Now, the defense has only talked to a handful of those 400 witnesses because these witnesses do not want to talk to the defense, which is a problem because if the prosecution has had the opportunity to talk to these witnesses and interview these witnesses, then they have, you know, they've had the opportunity to gather all of that information. But if the defense doesn't have that same opportunity because these witnesses do not want to talk to the defense, that creates a big problem. You know, because that's not really fair to Brian Koberger, and it's not fair to the defense. Now, here's another question. Can Ann Taylor really provide an adequate defense for Brian Koberger with her ties to the state? You know, I couldn't sleep last night, so very early this morning, I was watching a video that A.R. Hayes had uploaded. And he makes a lot of very good points about Brian Koberger's representation and the problems, you know, that could happen because Ann Taylor is an employee of the state. You know, Ann Taylor basically works with Bill Thompson. They both work for the state. You know, so is Ann Taylor able to provide you know, an aggressive defense for Brian Koberger, even though she's friends with all of these people. You know, it, it, it's funny because I have this vision of this courtroom once this trial starts. And if they, if they, if they don't grant a change of venue, I just have this picture in my head of a courtroom full of people who all know each other, other than Brian Koberger. Like a courtroom full of people who are all associated with each other and familiar with each other, other than Brian Koberger. Think about that. I mean, it's very, it's very strange, you know, because Brian Koberger has to be looking around this courtroom and thinking, you know, Who's, who's committed to my, you know, who's committed to me? Who's on my side? I'm not saying that Ann Taylor isn't a great attorney, certified in capital cases and lead. You know, I'm sure she's very professional, but she still has ties to the state. She's a public defender, and there's nothing wrong with that. But there's still that association and that would concern me if I was Brian Koberger. In my opinion, Brian Koberger needs representation that has no connection to the prosecution. You know, in my opinion, Brian Koberger needs representation that's going to fight for him. And, you know, that's going to represent him. Somebody who's there simply for Brian Koberger and doesn't share a friendship with the prosecution. Ann Taylor has also represented parents of these victims. You know, Ann Taylor represented Kara, Zana Kernodal's mom, on numerous cases. And she's also represented Maddie's parents. So it would seem as though there's a conflict of interest there. Brian Koberger needs representation that is not connected to this town. 
You know, A.R. Hayes said something in his video this morning that made a lot of sense because it's something that I've been thinking about as well. And he basically said that Brian Koberger is kind of stuck in this situation with his representation. You know, he can't afford a private attorney. So he's using, he has to use this public defender. But he's kind of in a bad way because this public defender is so closely associated with the prosecution. I, if I'm Brian Koberger, I want representation that doesn't have this connection, you know, to the prosecution, that doesn't have this friendship with the other side. You know, if I'm Brian Koberger, I want an attorney that's going to be there that's representing me. You know, as I said in my last video, when you when I was watching this hearing last Friday, it just seemed like, you know, Brian Koberger was kind of just sitting there, you know, out of the way while his representation and the prosecution and the judge all kind of just agreed with each other. And, you know, they're, they're all pals. So I have a feeling that Brian Koberger recognizes this and he's watching this, you know? And as A.R. Hayes said in his video, I also believe that it's very possible that we could see a, you know, Brian Koberger possibly ask the courts for a change in representation. And I think that that would be a very smart move on his part. You know, he really needs to, to have an attorney that just doesn't have all of these personal ties to, to this school to the University of Idaho, you know, to the town, and to the prosecution. So it wouldn't surprise me to see that not too far down the road. Now, as I said, I am not saying that Ann Taylor is not a good attorney. I'm not saying that a public defender, you know, can't be effective, but it wouldn't matter how good of an attorney Ann Taylor is because no matter what, she has this association to the state and to the prosecution. And if I'm Brian Koberger, you know, that would concern me. And I do believe that he is concerned about this. Now, Bill Thompson has said that he would consider a change of venue possibly Lewis County, which is an hour and a half away from Latah County. And Bill Thompson said that he would consider that. But does that expand the area out far enough? You know, so we'll have to see. And I think we're going to start seeing motions being filed regularly at this point. So as updates come up in this case, I'll definitely update you all. So tell me what you think. You know, do you think that this trial should be moved? And do you feel as though Ann Taylor can provide a strong defense for Brian Koberger? Thanks for watching my video and please like and please subscribe to my channel if you like my content. I really do appreciate it. We'll see you next time.